This is a follow-up to last month's video where I was showing you how we use net camps in our backyard here to avoid dancing with wolves. Or less poetically stated, uh, how we use IP cameras to keep our two little doggies from being eaten by coyotes. The challenge here is to get real-time notification of motion uh, when something moves, but more importantly, what moved. Um, if you looked at last month's video closely, you may have noticed when we approached each of these cameras, my cell phone talked to me and was telling me uh, that there was a person near a camera. So, for example, here we have a camera watching the trail and he's going to notify the house that he just saw somebody. The house camera was... 3 saw a person. Here the house just talked to us via the phone and told us it saw a person. Now, a related challenge is how you summarize a full day's worth of motion activity so you can quickly review it. Back in Utah, a couple years ago, I showed a video on a clever product available on FLIR cameras called Rapid Recap. Um, that condensed different clips throughout the day together into one clip with a time date stamp on the objects as they moved around. It's really clever but has a couple of disadvantages. One is it's not real time and another is it takes a lot of CPU power so you'd really only get a, a recap once or twice a day and you'd have to pay a service to do that. So that doesn't give you immediate object recognition like like these camera systems do. Now here we have another camera. We're gonna see if it detects that we just came. Camera two saw a person. Nope, that was camera two, and I'm a person. So doing effective motion detection in a forest is quite a challenge because you have all these trees with leaves and branches that blow around in the wind. You have the sun going in and out of the shadows. Uh, <laughs> the sun doesn't go into the sun goes in and out of the clouds creating sh dynamic shadows and at night you have insects flying around and spiders creating little spider webs so to battle all of that i created a couple of daemons python daemons oh, i love that word well, programs that run in the background and do smart things so to show you that in a little more detail we're going to have to leave this wonderful backyard outside afternoon hike and go down into my lair and show you on my computer screen a few more details. So, come with me. This is the Synology surveillance station program I briefly showed you last month. So we can double click on each of these cameras to get a live view of what's happening out there. And this is the 4K. Uh, I'm uploading this video in 4K, so uh, this camera is in 1K resolution, but these others are uh, in 4K, so you should see pretty good detail if you're on a 4K monitor. To get a review of a day's worth of activities, you can use this timeline view, which I have sped up here to um, 8x speed. You see in this view there was motion correctly identified as me, but in these other views, the motion it's detecting is just uh, shadow movement or leaves blowing in the wind. So we get a lot of false triggers and as you can see that these green bars here, it's pretty much all afternoon, it's detecting falsely uh, motion. So how do we do this smarter? So we start by setting up an action rule that uses the Synology motion detection uh, you can, by the way, set up the, the motion detection either to be based on the Synology algorithms or the algorithms based in your camera. The real link camera I have in this case are about the same accuracy-wise as the Synology algorithms. So they both have a lot of false detection. So I create an action rule here that when the motion is detection by the detected by the camera, it will create four snapshot pictures, uh, one second apart, and save them to a directory. Uh, then we have the first of our two daemon programs, something I 
wrote called SS Monitor uses a Python uh, watcher library that detects when a file has been created or updated. In this section of the code here, you can see if a JPEG file was created, then we will send a request to a server, a different server, they'll show you in a minute, uh, where we pass the uh, image to that server and then we get back data as to what's in that image. So this is where it gets interesting. This other daemon that's running I called OD server for object detection server uh, uses the Google TensorFlow code to do the object detection and recognition. So Google's done a whole ton of work in this area and they have lots of models that you can get online that vary in what they detect for objects and how accurately they detect them, trading off CPU time versus uh, model accuracy. So you can see here I've tried a whole bunch of models. And down here you can see the trade-off in CPU time. This is milliseconds, so this one's about a second, this one's about three seconds to do an object recognition. I settled on this fairly popular inception model because it gives me an op uh, recognition in about a little less than a second. If I'm on a fairly slow non-GPU based system, if I have a GPU card you can see that that speeds up by mm, factor of five or so. So here we see that the code gets loaded and normalized into, um, and, and by the way you don't want this image to be a 4k snapshot that takes way too long. So the snapshots are more like a VGA resolution. Here is the magic. Uh, what we see is a call to a TensorFlow session and we pass the, the image to get classified. And we get back uh, some boxes around the objects it sends and the scores for each of those boxes. And if the score is above a certain threshold, then we pass that list back to the turn it into that list of objects that were detected into a JSON string and we pass that back to the program that called it. So going back to the SS monitor daemon, we can see that uh, here's our JSON string and if it detected uh, objects recognized and if those objects were one of the sorts we're interested in, like a dog or a cat or a wolf or a car or a bus, uh, then it notifies the house program, uh, in my case Mr. House, and that'll announce it to both the house speakers and the phone, as you heard earlier. In addition, it, it copies the snapshot of that image to a file so we can review it. And once the video is done recording, it saves that as well. So the other thing the program, the house program does is once it detects a motion event, it'll take that snapshot and send it over to the house info display program. Uh, I've showed you this in previous videos. They have bunch of house data, temperatures, weather forecasts, power usage. Uh, in addition, it scrolls through a um, collection of photos and videos, so we have a kind of a dual purpose on these displays. Uh, when it detects an event, we'll get the display will be updated with that detection. So you can see each of these events has a box drawn around what it thinks is an object, along with the confidence level of what that object is. So in most cases we're seeing people. Here we see a car. Uh, some of these people don't have shirts on. Sorry about that. Uh, and it's not perfect. Like here at a 70% accuracy, it thought that this pot was a person. More on that accuracy uh, later. In addition to the snapshots with the objects detected uh, identified in boxes, we have the videos. They get displayed as soon as the video is done recording. So you can see uh, me happily trotting down the trail. So twice a day I use the FFmpeg program to summarize the results in two different ways. Here you can see what we're doing is using the FFmpeg program to just concatenate all of those snapshots that we collected with the objects identified into a file so that we can quickly review at high speed various things that were seen throughout the day. So you can see, let me pause one of these here. Most of these are people correctly identified. You can see occasionally there will be an elephant or a bear 
pop up in a shadow. There's a knife, you see the shadow kind of looks like a knife. So not perfect, but with retraining the data sets with the limited set of objects rather than the thousand that Google used, I think that this accuracy could be much improved. This program, Snapshot to Video, collects those identified objects from the snapshots. This program collects the uh, videos that were done, again using FFmpeg, and concatenates them all into one big video file uh, twice a day. So we can review the day's activity uh, versus the night's activity. And then it speeds it up 8x. So here's that same day summarized in 8x speed. Um, this is a day we gave a trail tour to uh, some friends that came by. Uh, so that's who you're seeing here. And you'll see them move from camera to camera uh, with me pointing, pointing out the cameras as we go. Kind of unusual to see net cameras in the middle of a forest. So um, those are two ways of summarizing quickly um, video activity. So I uploaded those FFmpeg scripts along with the two Python daemon scripts that do the object detection and surveillance station monitoring to a project page uh, linked below. Um, lots of room for improvements. The biggest improvement would be if we created a TensorFlow model that was specifically suited for this trail. That it would detect objects that I expected to see, like doggies and coyotes and raccoons. Uh, no pandas or elephants expected here. Now, creating those models from scratch takes a lot of CPU, and days or weeks of time. Um, and what Google's had pretty good luck with is taking existing models and retraining them with a subset or a, di subset or a different set of images. I tried that on a fairly low power CPU that only had 16 gig of memory and it ran out of memory. So I may try that again. I have a bigger computer now. Um, or I may rent out one of Google's cloud servers that have all those juicy GPUs attached to it. Uh, if we do that, I'll give you an update and let you know. So as I mentioned earlier, we can improve things also on the detection side by attaching a GPU card to the computer that's doing the object detection. Um, uh, that showed like at least a 5x improvement so we could use a much more accurate model and still get that sub-second object detection speed. Another option is you can try the one of these nifty new neural compute chips this is from Intel. They partnered up with a company called Movidius. These are the guys that make vision processing unit chips that go into those DJI drones for object detection. Intel's making these $80 little USB sticks. Wow. You plug it into your computer and you can um, upload TensorFlow models to do the detection on these chips rather than your CPU. These are pretty new, so I didn't have much luck with them uh, yet, but I expect in you know, a few more months that all that will get working better and this will be another option. Or you can just wait until camera manufacturers get smart and they start adding chips like this into their cameras. It only makes sense. I think Google's doing it now with their Nest Cams in the cloud. Um, but if they, when they start adding vision compute chips, little neural networks into the cameras, when they get cheap enough, they'll start adding these into the cameras and all that hard work will be done for you and it'll all just happen magically. All you gotta do is wait. I'm not quite that patient. Uh, so that I think is a wrap for this project. Thanks for watching. See you next time.